The Roto Brush is a fantastic tool in After Effects. It's used to select a segment and remove the background, or select the background and remove the foreground. Whatever you're selecting, it's a great tool. It works on things that are static or they're moving around. It's just that sometimes you need to help Roto Brush. So uh, this demonstration is just a couple of tips to make working with the Roto Brush easier. So a few things to remember that will just help you and stop those crazy things that happen when you do the wrong thing. Let's have a look. Here I've got a quick little video of our little friend here and I'm picking something that's, you know, a little bit hard to roto, but uh, nonetheless, it's, it's going to be our test uh, footage. I'll double click. It opens up in the uh, layers and I'll grab the roto brush up in the top. And the first thing you need to do is change the brush and make it pretty big. So I'm just holding down the command key or the control key on Windows, clicking and dragging with the mouse. Do not go around the outside edge. Just go through the main body of whatever you're selecting. So if you're selecting someone's arm, don't think about going around the edge. Think of the skeleton that runs through them, and that's what you're selecting. It's not meant to be perfect the very first time you select it. As you can see here, it gets some of the uh, guy, but not everything. So let me add a little bit more, another big stroke, another big stroke. And as I get down to the smaller ones, or the, the tighter edge of the area, I'm gonna drag this down and make it smaller, click along. It also doesn't hurt to come out into this area of the background I don't want, hold down the Option key, Alt on Windows, and click and drag. Even before it starts making mistakes, see it, it grabbed that area down there I didn't want. So initially, down here you'll notice that this little brown area, that is the base frame. Your job is to make this base frame as good as it can be. Everything else is based on this. So don't get this okay and then start working in another area. Stay inside and tweak the edges. So again, make my brush even smaller and start dragging near these edges. And you'll see occasionally it's gonna capture a bit of that stuff you don't want. So you're going back and forth in these areas. Over in my settings, the propagation, when I turn this down, on this particular file, I found that the search radius, and I take that down to five. Uh, so as it's searching, it's not looking too far away from that area. And the results were just a little bit better for me. I'm gonna have to really add a lot of blur inside here to capture some of this hair. It's not about to capture all of it. Uh, perfectly, but for this little motion file here, it's going to be fine. Again, I'll look around the edges. You know, here's a typical problem. We've got the light colored grass, the light colored fur. They're absolutely the same color, so you're going to have to go in there and uh, make sure you've got those edges. So a lot of these little areas are a little bit tricky, but I still go down inside and make sure I've got it. A little bit more, a little bit more, maybe some of that hair is mixing inside there. All right. The other thing that I found uh, in helping to control this is over here on the edge detection where it's set for balanced, if I change this to favor current edges, you're basically telling After Effects, look, I've already done a good job at making my selections. When you go and propagate this and make new frames, base it on what I have, not on, let's look at the other option, on the predicted edges. So I don't want your predictions, I want my edges that I've created. Okay, so again, it's telling us down at the bottom, it's gonna keep warning us that we should be at 100%. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it here. So let's look down at the bottom. Again, the very first frame is our base frame, and After Effects draws 20 frames on both ways. You'll notice that these arrows face in one direction. This one goes to the right, and that one goes to the left. Basically, it does not hurt to start playing this file and watching it. And you can see areas where it's having a problem, Go back to that area and fix it from there. Don't go out past that area and fix it. Because here's the problem. Let's say my first base frame is zero. The error occurred at uh, four. So you should fix it at four. If you pass four and you go to 15, and you go back to four and you edit four, 15 will change everything back. So you, you wanna work 
from the base frame forward and from the base frame backwards. So I'm just using my page up and page down keys on my keypad and I'll just page up until, oh, you can see it's getting a little bit away right from there. Almost instantly it's starting to move away. So again, option, paint, down a little bit. Every time we've got a little problem in there, you just hit that. And, and you know, it's much easier than having to go through the whole thing. Oh, we've got some around the eye there. Uh, but I think you get the idea. It's not going to, to change anything uh, too drastic because I'm moving in smaller increments in here. And you might get a little impatient and try to jump ahead, uh, but you'll only pay the price if you don't have that kind of patience. Oh, okay, no problem. Um, again, it's starting to blend the, the uh, brown of the fur into some of that grass and it might um, be okay for me to start use a smaller brush and then of course you've got to go back whoops down in here let me go back in and as we're caching this stuff it's going to be a little bit faster so if i started to jump out past this all the way over to here and now i start to make changes these changes will be affected um, all the way back. So it will affect some of the ones that I've already done. That's why you're working from one to two to three, and you do the exact same thing back here on the other side. So we start working backwards, same thing, going backwards in our frames. You can see again a little bit of the head in there, a little bit of the eye. Maybe make my brush even smaller. Remember, we can get this all the way down to one pixel in size. And we might need to do some additional work with different brushes, but I think you get the idea. So let's go there. And you'll see that everything is much more predictable when I'm working from the base frame out and the base frame out on either side. Um, and then when we're done, we can turn on things like refine matte and then soften this edge and you know that's going to and feather this and that's going to start helping us blend into those that outside edge and just get a much better roto so roto brush really is a fantastic tool it's a robust tool there's just a few settings inside there you need to be aware of and have a little patience and pay a little attention make sure you're changing your brush sizes make sure you're selecting in areas outside that you don't want uh, even if it hasn't gone and painted into that area just start telling roto brush don't look here don't look there this is the stuff i want uh, fine tune things and you're going to have your roto brush work looking much better much quicker Thank you.